let us see ideal transformer at no load means we are in phase one fundamentally we have to understand one thing that we love sinusoid okay so always like you know this is very popular interview question okay why we love sinusoid in machines or in power systems okay one thing i'll tell you our biggest customer basically in all over the world these many gigawatts of energy gigawatt hours or uh, energy is being produced to whom not for lighting loads okay maximum 80 85 percent of total power production in any country will be consumed in the name of induction motor and induction motor working principle depends upon rotating magnetic field proper rotating magnetic field can be produced if you supply sinusoidal voltage to induction motor so always like you know we will strive hard okay except dc machines in ac machines we strive hard to make sinusoid okay means that alternator yeah, generator or alternator will try to produce AC voltage, will transmit AC voltage. Everywhere we produce, we, uh, what is transmit, we consume AC voltage only or sinusoidal AC voltage only. Why sinusoid? Because our biggest customer induction motor uh, work properly with sinusoid. Okay, so that's why my source voltage is considered as sinusoidal voltage. And the moment uh, V1 is sinusoid, automatically back EMF will be induced because flux will be generated. Okay, as I told you previously, this is concise session, so in detail explanation is not possible. Once these sessions of machines and power systems and maybe power electronics are over, definitely I will start machines in detail. So don't expect each and everything in this session because it's going to be concise session, machines simplified okay so in machine simplified though like you know i can discuss many things but i don't want to discuss okay anyway this is going to be sinusoid now what will happen depending upon the number of turns here n1 okay i naught will flow and this i naught and n1 mmf current multiplied by number of turns mmf ampere turns depending upon this mmf flux will be produced and this flux will produce E1 and E2 sinusoidal voltages, okay? Such that if V1 is sinusoidal voltage, automatically E1 should be sinusoidal voltage. For example, if V1 is 100 volts, automatically E1 also should be 100 volts RMS, okay? Because almost these two are connected in parallel only. Now, let me, what do you say, derive an equation for this, okay? Now, by Faraday's law, we know that induced voltage is going to be minus N d pi naught by dt okay now for example this e1 this e1 should be sinusoid why because v1 is sinusoid okay so in order to make e1 sinusoid in order to make induced voltage sinusoid n d pi naught by dt operating flux should be sinusoid now let me take operating flux pi naught equal to pi naught maximum sin omega t sinusoid function okay means for example if flux is sinusoid here Automatically, if I consider very simple ideal machine, ideal machine in the sense linear, okay, linear in the sense your network theory, okay, means non-linearity will be analyzed at later point of time, but not now, okay. So, the moment ideal machine is linear, I is directly proportional to pi, okay. So, my current is going to be I naught, is going to be I naught maximum sin omega t. Now, if I keep this particular equation in this, okay, you are going to get induced voltage in primary E1, primary number of turns N1, okay, such that this equation you are going to get okay, just to place pi naught value here and differentiate it with respect to t and equate automatically you are going to get this equation only now for example if i think of rms value of primary induced voltage maximum is going to be this much so divided by root 2 so this is going to be root 2 pi f pi naught max n1 similarly if you try to calculate induced voltage here e2 because same flux is going to link this also and same flux is going to link this also so sinusoidal flux time varying flux so induced voltage should be there by faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction so because of this induced voltage will be e2 how many number of turns let me consider number of turns is n2 
okay now if i consider n2 in this particular equation induced voltage here is going to be e2 and number of turns are n2 flux in primary and secondary is going to be same because leakage is not considered now under that conditions e2 is going to be means minus n2 will come d pi naught by dt will come same pi naught will be same and number of turns n1 should be replaced with n2 so same equation will come in place of n1 n2 should be placed so root 2 pi f pi naught max n2 okay so combinedly from primary induced voltage and secondary induced voltage we can derive a beautiful conclusion that is e1 by n1 e1 by n1 is how much e1 by n1 okay e1 is induced for n1 number of turns under that conditions e1 by n1 is going to be emf per turn now emf per turn in primary and emf per turn in secondary is going to be same so e1 by n1 emf per turn in primary equal to emf per turn in secondary equal to emf per turn in primary emf per turn in secondary equal to root 2 pi of pi naught max now this equation has to be remembered okay so this equation you have to remember after that depending upon this right now we are going to solve multiple problems now if i come to phasor diagram okay so if i take pi naught and i naught in line actually phasor diagram is not required for gate aspirants maybe they can give directly phasor diagrams rather than like you know we cannot uh, expect any problems from phasor diagram now for example if i think of pi naught and i naught in line my induced voltage is going to be if pi, pi naught is sin omega t e1 is going to be sin omega t minus pi by 2 means that if phasor order of rotation is in anti clockwise direction pi naught and i naught are in line so if you go in the same anti clockwise direction it will become plus pi by 2 if you go in opposite direction in the sense i naught and pi naught are here so if you go in opposite direction this is going to give you e2 now by faraday's sorry by lenz law okay so if you see lenz law what is lenz law anything created should oppose cause of its creation okay so anything created should oppose cause of its creation so means in the same dimensions we have to say now like you know means that voltage have if induced is the voltage it has to oppose voltage because same dimensions if flux is induced it has to oppose its parent in terms of flux only Weber's only okay if current has to oppose current only in the same way for example if you think of e1 is the induced voltage this induced voltage is coming into the picture why this e1 is coming into the picture because of pi naught flux variation now can e1 oppose pi naught no actually e1 is induced because of pi naught as per Lenz law induced thing should oppose cause of its creation but by the same dimension so voltage should oppose voltage only so e1 is created because of pi naught but pi naught cannot oppose e1 because it is in Weber's that is in volts and pi naught is created because of pi naught again opposition is not possible so i naught is created because of v1 so e1 should oppose v1 is the point okay that's why we can say that v1 equal to minus e1 minus e1 okay under that conditions if e1 is here okay e2 is going to be here okay so for example e1 and e2 are in line because e1 means this equation will be n1 e2 this equation will be n2 under that condition it will be minus pi by 2 only so e1 will come here minus e1 will come in opposite direction 180 degrees such that minus e1 is going to be equal to v1 so this is going to be the phasor diagram i can say at no load now about this phasor diagram e1 and e2 are in line e1 and e2 are in line i will discuss in loaded condition coming session